uh, a few recipes today and we are covering nasi lemak. Uh, make sure you say hello and let me know where you're watching from by the way guys and if you want the recipes just comment in the uh, comment section of this broadcast and I will uh, get back to you on how you can get a hold of the recipes. But uh, thanks again for joining me and if you don't know who I am, I uh, used to run a Malaysian restaurant here in Sydney, Australia. I was born and raised in Malaysia and I uh, feature, well, I, I feature Malaysian cooking essentially on my platforms but specifically over the next few months I'm going to be demonstrating different ways to use your Thermomix and if you don't know the background to my Thermomix experience um, essentially I have been using a Thermomix TM5 for many years and if you watch my previous broadcast you will know I use it as a matter of um, as a matter of course in any cooking demo uh, whether I use it to uh, cook some stuff or to uh, use it as a food processor and all that sort of stuff to knead dough and all that right uh, but a, uh, a couple of months ago I was invited to check out the new Thermomix TM6 sorry Paul is just looking it's at me sorry, here way there's a mirror in the bottom because the screen's not on oh yeah 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 that's right yeah let me just turn this on <laughs> and I was invited to check out the Thermomix TM6 which I had previously been told because uh, I, I was using a TM5 I had previously been told that the TM6 was virtually identical to the TM5 and uh, not to worry about getting uh, an upgrade, okay? And once I saw the demo, I was so uh, I was so convinced about the differences between the TM5, which I had been using for seven years prior, and the TM6, that I went ahead and got one anyway. And I uh, basically, my journey now is to experiment with ways to use the Thermomix in general and it, the Thermomix TM6 in particular, okay? So thanks again for joining me. If you're interested to find out more about my recipes and all that and to get my recipes in your inbox, just sign up at jackiem.com.au slash TM6 and uh, I'll be sending you regular updates including when I go live and also recipes and cooking tips that I come across, okay? Um, okay, so today we are featuring something called nasi lemak. Uh, if you're not Malaysian or you're not familiar with Malaysian food, nasi lemak essentially is what most Malaysians would describe as Malaysia's national breakfast dish, okay? Um, now, uh, what it's made up of is uh, coconut rice, and secondly, uh, dried, fried anchovies. Thirdly, peanuts. Fourthly, uh, usually a boiled egg, sometimes it can be fried. And fifthly, the sambal, which is a chili condiment uh, that goes with the rice and the dried anchovies, okay? So what we're going to feature today, and sorry, I'll just knock this over. What we're going to feature today is, uh, fundamentally, I'm going to, Look, I, I've got two thermomixes here. Uh, some, some of these things I have actually pre-prepared beforehand, okay? Because we don't have time to go through everything from start to finish. So I'm just going to get started on making the sambal first. And, uh, and then while that's cooking, I'm going to cover some of the other stuff that goes on with making a nasi lemak meal, okay? So this is one of those dishes I used to sell at my restaurant pre Thermomix days and it is uh, very very popular among most people who like Malaysian food but also is very time consuming to make okay now when I used to sell nasi lemak both at my restaurant and also at um, outdoor events okay because I do a lot of pop-ups and a lot of festivals and that sort of stuff one of the main sticking points with making a nasi lemak is the coconut rice okay and we will talk a little bit about my hack for making uh, coconut rice in an easy way uh, that's also going to be uh, very uh, you know very original okay in the sense that it's the flavor is not compromised or anything like that but what we're going to make now is the sambal okay the sambal uh, like I said is a chili condiment and uh, there are a few different uh, recipes different ways to make the sambal my stepmom makes it different she makes it with coconut milk i don't uh, when i um and then of course there are different versions of the sambal as well depending on which part of malaysia which part of the malaysian uh, peninsula you eat your sambal and also 
even dependent on like uh, which store you buy it from. Okay, so the sambal that I used to serve at my restaurant did taste a little bit sweeter than some of the sambal you might find in um, in other stores. Okay, so if in Malaysia, if you don't know about Malaysia, it's multi-ethnic. And uh, you know, depending on who makes a, a, a particular dish, uh, you know, it, it will have certain nuances. Okay, so you, if you eat nasi lemak from a particular store, say cooked by, I don't know, some Malay vendors, it might be a little bit spicier, a little bit less sweet, uh, minus sweeter and less spicy. Okay, that's just how I like to prepare my food for my clientele here in Australia. Okay. Right, so what my sambal consists of is the chili and the onions, okay, and also some sliced onions. So we're going to have two different types of onion. Uh, well, we're going to have one type of onion prepared two different ways. And first of all, we're going to do the sliced onion. So I'm going to call uh, up my brand new Thermomix cutter, which if you are he here in Australia and New Zealand, and you want me to do a demo for you. If you want to host a demo, invite some friends over uh, and get me to do a demo, whether in your place, if you're based in Sydney or, you know, virtually online, uh, you can actually score one of these for free, okay? So this is, uh, but only in February. So you only have like a couple of weeks left on this. Uh, but this cutter is going to help me to slice the onion. So what I've done here is, first of all, I've added the spindle here. It goes in here like this. And then this is the tub that sits on top of it, okay? And then this thing here, I demonstrated in my previous uh, live that it's quite clever. It's got two sides and depending on which side, uh, it will you know, determine like whether it slices or grates your food, okay? So this time we want to slice it, so I'm going to put it up this side up, okay? And the way you tell the difference is that the, this little bit here that sticks out is dark and this is light, okay? So if you want to slice it, you want it on the dark, uh, with the dark side sticking up. Now, uh, this is the display. If you're not familiar with the Thermomix, this is the display. And this display on the TM6 is much larger, easier to read than that on a TM5, okay? So this is what it looks like. And what I want to do is I want to go over here and select the option to uh, slice, okay? Can you see that here? Slicing, okay? Now, on the TM5, you're not going to have this option, okay? This cutter attachment works on both the TM5 and the TM6, but on the TM5, you have to do this manually. But here, you can kind of like uh, check out a little bit, you know, you don't have to work your brain a little bit too hard to figure out, okay, where, how, and how fast I should get the dials and whatever, okay? So I just press slicing, okay? And, and then it's got the option thick or thin, okay? Now, um, I, I use, I, I, I've done this a couple of times and I have used the thin option before. You know what, let's try the thick option this time around, okay? So it's really up to you how thick or how thin you want the onion. So I've got here two big onion, onions and I've, I'm going to actually slice half of it and the rest I'm going to blend, okay, in the next step. So let's go for it, let's go for thick, okay? And it's gonna start doing it thick, you can see it, let's cut this in. <laughs> That's probably enough I think. Okay, so I'm going to show you how it looks. Uh, don't forget to comment, okay, and let me know if you're interested in getting your hands on these recipes because I will send them to your inbox and I think in the um, if you read the comments the top comment it might actually have a link to how you can sign up to my email list mm -hmm. and um, get your hands on the recipes which I will send out okay I know I've been saying that this is our fifth broadcast right and I know I've been saying this for a while but uh, I'm still trying to get some of my projects because apart from these live broadcasts, I also do a lot of stuff um, to do with my other projects, okay, with videos and, 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 and cookbooks and all that sort of stuff. So I am running a bit behind, so thank you for your patience. The quickest way to get your hands on my recipes for this uh, Thermomix series 
if you don't mind my like sharing like random like unformatted writings okay is to join my whatsapp group and i think paul will ha happily share you the link to join my whatsapp group for that but anyway so uh, now, what we're going to do, uh, oh, let me just remove the spindle. Important if you've got one of these, don't forget to remove the spindle. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to puree this, okay? So we've got some lemongrass, okay? This is actually frozen lemongrass. I use a lot of shortcuts by virtue of the fact that, like I said, I used to run a Malaysian restaurant, so I you know i'm always short of staff so i find ways to do things efficiently okay so uh some of this um you know if i were still at my restaurant i'd actually be using pre-minced uh lemongrass okay that i can buy okay but anyway this is lemongrass and i'm gonna chuck in the rest of the onion okay it's actually quite a fair bit here doesn't matter so uh we're going to blitz this and you know what? I've got some chilies here as well. I'm going to chuck in some of these chilies. This is not enough chili for what we want to use. And I'm going to top it up with uh, chili powder. Let me just quickly show you. It's another shortcut. Okay, so this is chili powder that I'm going to add to all of this. Okay, Malaysian. The brand is Baba's if you want to check it out. And this chili powder is great because it produces beautiful color to your food and it's not that spicy okay but i'm going to use a mixture of both if you've got dry chilies you can use that too just make sure you pre-soak it in hot water to soften it um, and if you've got fresh chilies if you like it super spicy you want to use some bird's eye chilies go for your life okay so this is just basically what i dug up from my fridge uh, some fresh chilies and I'm going to top it up with some chili powder, mild chili powder here. I'm just going to cut off the stems of these chilies here. Okay, so I've got these big chilies, chuck them in. I'm going to chuck in some chili powder. Uh, you see the way I cook, you know I do a lot of stuff agak agak, which in Malay means kind of like guesstimating, okay? So I've chucked in some of this, okay? And I'm just going to put it away. And now we're going to blitz all of this, okay? And I'm going to uh, yell out to Paul <laughs> for some oil, which I forgot to get. So uh, if you can just help me out with that, that'd be great. Okay, so uh, back to the screen. If you can follow me here, back to the main screen. And I'm going to use this. Now, if you're not familiar with how a Thermomix works, all right, there is a little bit of a learning curve. But essentially, the main panel will show you, this is to do with the time, okay? How long you want this to do its thing for. This is the temperature, so it's touch screen, so whatever you touch. Uh, yeah, just bring that thing over and a, a ladle if that's okay. Um, so, okay, so time, temperature, and the blade, the blade speed, okay? And you can actually change, if you press it again, it will say reverse enable, you can't see here, okay. Okay, let me just reverse disable so it toggles between uh, spinning it one way with the sharp edge of the blades, okay, or spinning it in reverse, which means it doesn't chop. But we do want it to chop because we want this to actually be pureed, okay. So I'm going to ignore the temperature and I'm going to ignore the time because I'm just going to blitz this. Um, let me just move some of my. I'm going to just blitz this. Did you pour it in there, did you? I did, yes. Okay, cool. It's fine, do that later. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to blitz this, okay? So this is... The okay, this is just like using your food processor, but much more powerful, much more efficient, okay? So let's have a look, see how it looks like. Okay, so this is what we've got now. Let me just, I keep bumping into this camera. Okay, you see everything is beautifully pureed, right? So if you were using a food processor, what you would be doing is transferring this into a wok or a pot and then cooking it and then you're going to have oil all over your kitchen. That's one of the things about Malaysian cooking that kind of like puts a lot of people off, right? Having to do it at home, so they prefer to go out and eat. But if you've got a Thermomix, you can do all of this in your Thermomix, okay? So like I said, blend it okay i'm gonna scrape this down okay i know you're supposed to use your thermomix 
scraper, your Thermomix does come with a beautiful scraper, but I, I don't want to have to run off and wash it. It's all right, because I need to use it for something else after this. Okay, so I'll scrape this down. What I'm going to do now is I'm just scrape the wrist. Yeah. Poor, uh, any and say hi. Uh, hello guys, mm. thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Hit me up if you've got any questions. So, scraped it in. Okay, we're going to add oil to this, okay? So, I've got some oil here on the side. It's going straight into the Thermomix, okay? So, here we go. Okay, is that enough oil? Okay, here we go. Should be enough. So, we're going to cover this. And we're going to cook this, and I'll go. I'll, I'll, I'll circle back and talk about what we're doing here in a second. Okay, so uh, I'm trying to think. Okay, I'm going to cook this. Okay, for say ten minutes at 100 degrees. Okay, 100 or oh, even 120 degrees. Okay, 120 degrees, and you know what? I'm going to use. This splatter guard, okay. This uh, is a new thing as well, okay. It doesn't come with the TM5, it comes with the TM6. I'll put this on top, okay, because I don't want the cup here, which is what usually goes here, to kind of like uh, push the steam back into the thing and make it soggy, okay. So, the great thing about the splatter guard, it does what it does, which is to protect uh, splatter from getting everywhere, and also it lets the steam out, okay. So 120 degrees, uh, 10 minutes, I got a gut, okay? And we're going to um, get it to spin, okay? So it's spinning at the speed of one. It can spin at increments of 0 0.5 here, okay? So what it's doing it, what it's doing now is that it's spinning your food for you. It's cooking your food. Remember, I've still got this. We're going to add this later on, okay? Now, let's go back to talk about some of the ingredients that are going in here, okay? So the ingredients that you want are tamarind, okay? So I've got some tamarind concentrate here. This is in a jar, okay? Again, one of my shortcuts, you can buy this at Asian grocery stores. Uh, different brands of tamarind concentrate come in different strengths, okay? And what does tamarind do? Tamarind provides that kind of like sour vibe to your food, okay? It doesn't necessarily mean it makes your food taste sour outright. It just kind of has a... Uh, you know, more, uh, more, uh, um, you know, more nuance to your food. Okay, so you're going. To, we're going to add some tamarind juice to this in a bit. Don't have tamarind juice? You can use lime juice or lemon juice. Okay. Now the other thing we're going to add is belachan. Belachan uh, is uh, paste. You can use Thai shrimp paste. You can't find Malaysian, but I highly suggest Malaysian. Okay, because I am biased. <laughs> Now, again, one of my shortcuts is to use balachan powder. Now, balachan usually comes in blocks, right? And uh, Thai shrimp paste comes in, usually comes in a jar in kind of like a, 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 a paste form, okay? So, um, you can buy the blocks. The blocks would require you to break, uh, some of the blocks are pre-cut, okay? Uh, but you just have to uh, snap some off and then chuck it in, okay? Uh, I buy it in powder form because it's easier to control the portion, okay? But this is not always available. I have had trouble getting a hold of this lately. So get the block version, get the Thai shrimp paste or whatever. Uh, other ingredients we're going to use, uh, I, you know me, I'm a, a bit of a fan of chicken powder. So we're going to add a little bit of chicken powder to this just to give it some nuance, some body, okay? I'm going to add a bit of sugar. I'm using raw sugar. And being Chinese, I want to add a hint of chard, uh, soya sauce to it as well, okay? So, uh, soya sauce over here. I've got all of this on standby. We're going to add to this. Like I said, there are lots and lots of different versions, different ways to make uh, sambal uh, for the ikan bilis. And this is the way I would make it at my restaurant back in the day, okay? So these are the ingredients we're going to tackle in a little bit. Now, what else comes with a nasi lemak? Uh, you basically, if you earn a Thermomix, I think most people who own a Thermomix, if you're Asian, would know about how to cook rice in a Thermomix, okay? Now, uh, cooking rice in a Thermomix helps you to control the, uh, the texture of the rice, okay? It turns out beautifully. It takes 20 minutes, but I didn't want to hold up this session with 20 minutes of waiting for the rice to cook. So I have pre-made it. 
I'm springing over. What did I do? Okay. Whoops. Okay. So this is the rice. Okay. And what we're going to do is I'll talk a bit about how I made this. Okay. So the other thing, the other difference with the TM5 and the TM6 is that the TM uh, with the TM6 the the basket has a lid. Okay. The TM5 does not. Um, so there you go. So that's the rice. And the way rice is cooked in a thermal mix is that you put water in here and you can go through the guided cooking, okay? So you can do that in both the TM5 and the TM6. What you do with the uh, guided cooking, you just select uh, boiled rice and then it'll tell you, at, uh, it'll, it'll bring up the scales. So both uh, versions have built-in scales. Uh, bring up the scales. It'll say weigh in one kilo of water and you add one kilo of water. And they will say add the uh, add the rice, add this, add that. Okay, so with nasi lemak, what I've done with this is I have actually cooked this with um, with rice <clears throat> with some salted water, right? So salted water and rice, no oil, no butter, which are optional. Okay, but this is rice with salted water. And what I also did, if you're Chinese or if you're Malaysian. You would know when you cook rice in a rice cooker it, uh, that you can actually chuck in eggs with your rice, okay? So I chucked in an egg here and we're going to scrape it out. So the egg will be served with the nasi lama, right? As boiled, hard boiled egg, okay? So that saves you having to have a separate thinger to cook some egg in. Okay, you see the steam coming out, okay? So this is cooking beautifully another five minutes to go so what we're going to do if this guy got a, an egg in there somewhere we're going to scrape this out can we get me a rice scoop please um, we're going to scrape this out there's one in the thing i think you know in the rice cooker. oh right, right, right. yeah it's the best one ever. you are right okay now uh, i'm going to talk about the difficulty the challenge uh, of cooking nasi lemak rice in big quantities uh, when you're running a business, okay? I know because I, I started out selling food at markets and at events and all that sort of stuff, okay? So uh, the difficulty with cooking coconut rice is that coconut milk uh, causes the rice to get bloody and causes the rice to stick together, okay? And causes it to burn, okay? So if, whether you're using a rice cooker, you know, if you're Malaysian, most Malaysians would be familiar with rice cookers or whether you're actually cooking it on a stove or whatever. When you cook rice, you have to control the temperature and all that. Obviously with the rice cooker, you don't have to worry about the temperature con control so much because everything is automated, right? You just add water, add rice and voila, okay? But if you're cooking coconut rice, what you do is you replace the water, some of the water with coconut milk, okay? Or coconut cream because you want to produce coconut rice. And the problem with coconut, with adding water, uh, okay, so here's my egg. The problem with using coconut milk and coconut cream is that it's sticky, it's starchy, okay? And it causes your rice to scorch at the bottom, bottom okay? Uh, especially if you're cooking it on a stove, okay? So you have to really, really watch the, 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 the temperature uh, and make sure that you don't end up burning the rice, okay? So our um, our workaround when I used to do coconut rice was to actually reduce the amount of coconut milk or coconut cream I use in it to prevent it from sticking, okay? And of course, what happens then is that your rice doesn't taste coconutty, okay? So what I do now, when you cook this in the Thermomix, okay? Cook it as though you were cooking normal rice, Okay, chuck an egg in there or however many eggs you want and that will kill two birds with one stone. You've got boiled egg with your, with your nasi lemak. Okay, add salt in the water. Add a little bit more salt because the water like is just being splashed onto the rice. Okay, the way the thermomix cooks rice is that uh, it agitates the water in the bowl while the, so the basket that your rice sits in, okay, has water splashed over it. And in 20 minutes, it cooks a beautifully fluffy rice that are loose, okay? They're not sticky, they're not uh, gooey or whatever, okay? So you want the rice, sorry, I've just got um, rice stuck on my hands. 
Um, and then what you do, you use coconut milk powder, okay? So I've got this in a thingo. Those of you in Australia, go look for coconut milk powder next time you go shopping. Okay, this is a lifesaver for me. So after it's cooked, rice is still hot, it's slightly salty, which is what you want. If you want to use pandan leaf, right, you can chuck a pandan leaf in the rice in the steamer basket. But don't add the coconut milk until after your rice is cooked, okay? Now you can add it, okay? But instead of coconut milk, you use coconut milk powder, okay? So you do that. And just toss it in, okay? And this will produce beautiful, coconutty, flavorsome rice that you'll be proud to serve, okay? I have had, like, you know, uh, like I said, I've sold Malaysian food for over 20 years, okay, and I have had all kinds of comments about my food, some positive and some not, okay, and one of the complaints that I heard back in the day was that my rice, my nasi lemak rice did not taste coconutty enough, and if these people were working in the conditions I was working in, which is outdoors, where I had to cook a lot of rice in on stoves and you know, you have to manage the, uh, the rice and make sure they don't burn on the bottom. Uh, the reason why that the rice did not taste coconutty enough was not because I was being cheap and did not want to spend too much on coconut milk, but because it would burn the rice if I used too much. But um, if I knew about <coughs> the hack of using coconut milk powder, that's what I would do, okay? So if I were to do this again today, I would use coconut milk powder and chop it in. Okay, so this is cooking, okay, this is about done. I'm just going to stop this and I'm going to show you how it looks, okay. So, I hope you can see this. Okay, so we are on the way. So this has been cooking. Uh, now we're going to add the other stuff in there again. Uh, I, I will give you the proper recipe after this session at some point in the next, hopefully in the next uh, few days, okay. Um, Paul, can you get me some spoons and whatnot, please? Okay, first of all, we're going to add some balachan, okay, very agar agar, okay, I'm going to add some powder here. I'm going to chuck in the onion, okay, the sliced onion, okay. So these are a bit chunkier than the previous batches that I had made, okay. But again, you know, you can decide if you want chunkier onion or thinner onion, okay. Six lines, right. Sorry. Right. Uh, I'm just going to add some tamarind, okay? So that maybe a, that should be enough. <coughs> a little bit of chicken powder, totally optional. I like to do it because it just gives a little bit of body, right? Um, a little bit of soy sauce, that's the Chinese in me, okay? I think it just adds a nice little bit of a color to it anyway. Okay, and sugar, okay? Like I said, my nasi lemak does taste a little bit sweeter than the average one you might find, okay? Okay. Okay, three and a half tablespoons, okay? Totally agar agar. If you want more later, you can add more. Cover this again and cook it again. Let's just add another whatever number of minutes, okay? So here we go again. So the great thing about the Thermomix is that so far everything is cooked inside this, okay? So you don't have an open pan or an open wok where you've got the oil splattering everywhere, <laughs> making a mess, splattering on your walls, on your uh, splash bag and all that sort of stuff, right? Everything is just being done in here. Now, uh, with this uh, sambal recipe, again, like I said, you know, you can tweak the recipe according to how you prefer it. You can make it more spicy. You can add coconut milk in it too, okay? My stepmom makes a beautiful nasi lemak sambal that has coconut milk in it, okay? And I love it. But it's just when I'm making, you know, for my business, uh, and, and actually, she actually would throw in the ikan bilis, the dried anchovies, in there as well. I don't do that because uh, I want the dried anchovies to look like it's a separate thing, okay? So, uh, this is cooking. Uh, hit me up if you've got any questions. So, we've got the egg here. 
and uh, this is quite hot, but so let's just try and see if I can just peel this. Uh, again, if you've got any questions about the ingredients that I'm using and any kind of substitutes, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, some of you belong to my community of uh, online coaching members. So for those of you who don't know, I actually teach people how to cook Malaysian food both in person and also online. Okay, So if you're interested to find out more about my online coaching membership where our community get to learn a new dish every month and also they get access to a library of like scores and scores of recipes by yours truly uh, and also you get access to me to engage with me in a zoom session and also in our online community you get to ask me questions directly uh, just hit me up for more information about that we are uh, in the, at the you know so we are, we are in the cusp of relaunching that online community so if you're interested to find out more sign up to my email list and you'll be first to uh, to get access to it, okay? You'll, you'll be first to get access to being one of our new founding members, okay? So this is cooking. And got the egg, I'm just going to, usually you would want to actually just cool this down, okay, before you peel it. But I'm gonna peel it now while it's still hot. And other things that go with the nasi lemak are cucumber. So I might get Paul, if you don't mind, grabbing me my cucumber. And also, so I'm just peeling this. Where is the cucumber? In the fridge. <laughs> there should be one more. And yes, also... Huh? There's a lot. Okay, okay. No, half a cucumber. Lot. That's alright. I just want to show you guys, plated up, what a nasi lemak looks like. So, that's the egg that was boiled with the rice, right? Okay. Definitely was not me. Uh huh. Okay, cucumber. So the way you would cut cucumber, typically for nasi lemak, back at my restaurant, is to cut it into chunks. Okay. You kind of cut it at an angle, right? Okay. You see what I'm doing over here? But of course, you can just slice it, whatever takes your fancy, okay? And if you have banana leaf, even better, you would use the banana leaf to wrap up your nasi lemak with. So that's the egg, let's cut it in half. Okay, so there you go. So that's an uh, egg, slightly, slightly overdone, but I mean, it's a small, um, you know, it's a small trade-off. Um. Let me just put some stuff away just so we can clean up this area a little bit. Okay, so let's let me just get this to the side. I'm going to get a plate over and I'll plate up the nasi lemak so you can see what it looks like. from my restaurant days. Can you get me a small bowl, please? Um, oh, uh, just a normal rice bowl, that's okay. Okay. Um, okay, so this is still cooking away. And I'm going to talk about the ikan bilis after this, but I can't until this is done, okay? So we're just gonna wait a couple of minutes. 
and then I'll show you everything else. Now, with the nasi lemak, uh, like I said, even better if you have banana leaf to serve this on. This is what I used to do at my restaurant, no, rice bowl. The Chinese rice bowl, yeah. Okay, so um, if I had banana leaf, I would line a platter. I used to serve it in one of these long platters. Line it with banana leaf, or otherwise, if you're serving nasi lemak kind of wrapped up, then you would use banana leaf as well. But the presentation would be a bit different. Okay, okay, but anyway, what I would do uh, plate banana leaf, okay, obviously a different plate, not, not this kind of pseudo bowl then. Rice, okay, what you want to do. Let's get the rice. Let me just see if I can show the okay. Use a rice bowl to mold your rice, okay? What you want to do is just kind of press it down. Okay, place this on here, right? And then peanuts which I have fried previously, okay, you can do this in an air fryer or something. Pretty sure I can hack the TM6 to fry some peanuts for me. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm not going to um, uh, talk about that too much. But here we go, some peanuts. And who caught my demo the other day making achar? If you did, okay, I used to serve nasi lemak with achar, okay, this is the achar. I made so much of it, I had to give some away. And I actually promised someone that I bumped, in, that I bumped into that I was going to give them some achar. Paul, can you get me a pair of tongs, please? Actually, you know what, I'm just going to use this one. So this achar was made using a Thermomix, okay, and using the, 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 the grater function. So it's got, uh, there's a pickle with uh, crushed nuts and sesame seeds but it's made with a combination of cabbage, snake beans, cucumber and carrots, okay? So some achar here. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just remove the bowl, okay? So this is what it looks like. And unfortunately, obviously, this would be much prettier if we had banana leaf, okay? But let's get, let just get some achar on here. Get some cucumber, get the boiled egg. Uh, did I make this on, on, on camera? Surrounding. I don't no. I made this surrounding, okay? This is a meat floss and it's made with a leftover actually brisket. beef brisket. Okay, so what I did was I basically minced up the beef brisket in my thermomix and then I added all the Rumpa, all the spice ingredients in there and let it cook. Okay, so that's what it is. So it's been sitting in my fridge sort of thing and You can serve this with a bit of surrounding. Usually you would serve nasi lemak maybe with some curry Maybe some rendang some fried chicken and that sort of stuff. Uh, we're not gonna make that today We might make some chicken curry next time. Okay, but today I'm just gonna put a little bit of surrounding here. Okay So I'm gonna make surrounding and Let's see how this is going. I'm just going to stop this. Okay, I know it says it's got uh, five minutes to go. So I'll just stop this. And the other the feature with the TM6 is that it's got a safety feature built in. So when I press stop before it finishes the cycle, it does actually count down. It doesn't allow you to open it up right away. Okay, just to make sure you don't kind of accidentally scorch yourself and whatever. It just wants to cool down and then open up gently for you. Okay, so let's have a look and see how this looks now. Okay, let me just... Get the syrup, okay? So this is what it looks like now, okay? You can add a bit more oil and fry it longer. Okay, let me just taste test this. Okay, flavor's pretty close. It's a bit spicy because I think of the big chilies, yeah? Um, but we're gonna cook it a little bit longer. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil to this and, 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 and circle back. But I have some that I already made the other day, Paul, did you mind just getting me one of those tubs of sambal? 
Okay, so I made this, not this one. <laughs> yeah, we've been making so much stuff with my thermal mix, right? That we've got stuff, not this one, it's the plastic, the one with the blue lip. That we, 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 we actually have this problem of trying to figure out what all these different sambals are for, okay? So this and is the... Like three plates of nasty lemak a day. Yeah, yeah, and eating three plates of nasty lemak a day. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's done, okay? So it's beautifully, beautifully red in colour. And we're going to, let me just clean this up, um, scoop this in, okay. So this is the sambal, okay. Again, remember this batch I used uh, the thin slice function uh, on, the, on the onion, okay. So it looks a little bit more uh, thin. Um, now, okay, what I want to really show you is this final thing, okay, I, I will pick this up again uh, after this session, but you don't have to wait around like another 10 minutes to see it because you're not going to see anything anyway, it will just keep cooking. Uh, all I want to show you is what you can do in a TM6 that you can't do in a TM5, which is to make uh, the dried anchovies, okay. If you're not familiar with dried anchovies, what we call it, gum villas in Malaysia, and because I just came back from Malaysia, I've got lots of this that I brought back with me, okay? So this is what they look like. Go to your Asian grocery store and look for Igambulis. And these ones are peeled, okay? Malaysian Igambulis is the best, okay? I have to say this, you can buy probably like uh, ones from other countries, but the quality uh, from Malaysia are the best, okay? So this is what you're looking for. Dried anchovies, okay? Not the anchovies in jars in oil, okay? And what you want to do is just rinse this out before you use this. And then go to your Thermomix. I've saved this to my recipes. And this is one of like thousands of recipes on the Thermomix platform called Cookie Do. Okay, Cookie Do has like uh, over 10,000, 11,000 recipes stored in them. And I'm a professional cook. I cook for a living. And before... I went on to Cookie Do and to check out some of the recipes. I thought, I don't need this. I know how to cook. I know my recipes, okay? But then uh, I came across all these <laughs> different functions and different recipes that made me think, you know what? You know, even if I have to tweak them to my liking, it's great that I can just uh, save these recipes and then follow them along without me having to put too much thought into them, okay? So I have saved this in here. So this is the TM6 version of the menu okay so i've gone to uh, created collections and uh i think i saved this in basics actually okay so you can create your own categories okay so i saved this in 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 in, in uh, basics okay where it says can you see it where it says crispy ikan bilis so i have saved this if you have a thermomix and you have a uh, cookie do account make sure you save this okay crispy ikan bilis, okay and what you need to do, this is what they call the guided cooking function, okay? What you saw me do earlier was just manual cooking. I just kind of like uh, went for it and decided to set my own time, set my own like cooking temperature and what well, is guided cooking, okay? So these recipes are stored in there. So what you want to do is click on start cooking and it says here, okay, I hope you can see, place 150 grams of cooking oil in this thing here and it brings up the scales as well. So what you would do here now is actually pour in 150 grams of oil and then click next, okay? When you click next, it says add 100 grams of dried anchovies, this thing here, 100, 100 grams, okay? And also it brings up the uh, scales, so you add the dried anchovies in there. And then click next and it will tell you, make sure they're evenly distributed in the mixing bowl, okay? So even if I weren't at home and I want this done up for when I get home, I can call up Paul and say, Go to my uh, thermal mix and pull up the ikan bilis recipe and do it. And then, so he doesn't miss any step. It actually reminds him, make sure you do this properly, all right? And then you click next. Place splash guard on top of mixing bowl, which is this. And you click next. And then you click done. And now it brings up this thing. It says, please turn the speed selector to start, okay? When you turn it, it will then start cooking for you, okay? So this is how I've been making all my previous batches of it can be ever since I got my TM6, okay? This is, the, this is what's called the high temperature feature of the Thermomix, uh, thermo okay? So one of the uh, 
basically tipping points that convinced me to get the TM6, even though I already had a Thermomix uh, TM5, which I was very happy using for seven years. Uh, the high temperature feature is what kind of like got me over the line to buy this, okay? So what it is, is that uh, it can, the Thermomix TM6 can cook up to 160 degrees Celsius, whereas this one, the old one, can only go up to 120 degrees. The caveat is that the 160 degree temperature, high temperature setting, is only available in the uh, Thermomix official recipes, okay, like that crispy ikan bilis, okay, so if it says 100 grams of ikan bilis, um, you know, that's what I have to use. If you try and cheat and you try and add 200 grams, it will tell you, it's like, uh, no, this is not going to work because you put too much in there or something like that, okay? So these are the, 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 the little caveats because they want to make sure that the recipes turn out exactly and also they want to make sure that you don't abuse the high temperature setting by, you know, putting too much stuff in there and, and then causing um, things that not to turn out, okay? So, uh, and then once you click uh, start, it will cook on its own. You can go away, do your own things and come back and voila! After 20 minutes, 25 minutes, this is what you will end up with. Now, I have to point out that the crispy cumberless recipe actually then goes on and asks you to add other stuff because it's a full recipe. It's not just frying the cumberless, okay? All I want to do for my nasi lemak is just fry the cumberless. So I fry it and then I stop it after 25 minutes when it says the cumberless is done. Uh, now add other things to it. You know, I, I, I just stop and, and kill the program, okay? So it does this beautifully crisply, okay, and you can store it in a uh, an airtight container afterwards and keep it until you're ready to use it, okay, so this is the ikan bilis and voila, this is my nasi lemak, okay, most of which is done using my Thermomix, okay, uh, well, I hope you found this useful, if you've got any questions, hit me up, uh, like I said, uh, I have a Thermomix uh, WhatsApp community, and I also have a Thermomix uh, subscriber newsletter uh, community, okay? So if you sign up to my mailing list, the newsletter thing up, you will get notified when I go live and all that sort of stuff. And you might get other notifications from me about my durian cookbook and all this other stuff, all these other exciting projects. We've actually just produced 50 videos covering famous Malaysian cuisine where our film crew travel all over Malaysia to feature all these different famous Malaysian hawkers cooking these dishes, okay? So if you sign up to my mailing list, you'll get notified about all that. If you join my Thermomix community on WhatsApp, this is where I kind of like, you can hit me up with questions, you can post photos of your whatever. Uh, I can quickly post photos and say, hey, look, this is what I just made on my Thermomix, in my Thermomix, and this is what I use in it, just bam, 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 all text-based sort of stuff, okay? So wherever you want to join uh, in my, uh, Malaysian food content ecosystem. I would love to have you, but uh, apart from that, any other comments? Jit asks, Hi Jackie, do you wash the ikan bilis first, dry them with paper towel, then fry them? I, I wash them and just kind of like uh, give, give them, them a, a shake, shake. okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I don't always wash them, uh, depending on the type of ikan bilis, okay? Some of them are more salty than When I had my business, I have to admit, um, I didn't use to wash them and that actually was by accident because I actually the person who was helping me in the kitchen one day didn't realize you had to rinse the ikan bilis before you fried them in the uh, fryer okay and the other thing about frying the ikan bilis in a fryer is that it just ruins the oil okay uh, frying it in a thermomix I use very little oil compared to what I would need if I were frying it in a wok and I end up with a ton of oil that I really can't repurpose for other stuff because it smells very fishy um, but yeah back in the day uh, the first time someone made some fried up some ikan bilis I thought wow this turns out really turned out really nice and then I realized after the fact that they didn't actually rinse and, and and dry the ikan bilis. So I thought, well, let's just go with this. It's just one more step that we save in the kitchen, you know? Uh, but yeah, when I do it at home, I do rinse it and just give it a shake and then before I throw it in the oil, okay? Uh, like I said, if you are based in uh, Australia or New Zealand and you're interested and you don't have a consultant looking after you in terms of Thermomix, uh, you can, uh, you know, you can opt for me to be your consultant. But if you do have someone who looks after you with your Thermomix and whatever, stick with them okay unless unless you don't like <laughs> um but yeah if you're interested in a thermomix i can actually organize to uh you know to 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 be your consultant and also if you want me to do a demo for you before the end of 
uh, February and uh, somebody that you invited to the demo, whether virtually, because nowadays you can actually do demos via Zoom virtually, or uh, in person, if you're based in Sydney and not too far away from me, uh, I can do a demo at your place and we can have fun cooking up a storm with all kinds of Malaysian dishes. Uh, if someone buys a Thermomix, you get to get that cutter for free, okay? The cutter is not currently available to buy, but uh, it's valued like give or take $200, okay? So if you're interested in that, just talk to me, just message me or whatever, okay? Thanks again so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Thanks guys.